Chapter P, Prerequisites, Fundamental Concepts of Algebra, Lesson P2, Exponents and Scientific Notation. Today we're going to be going over all the different rules when we're working with exponents, in this case simplifying and evaluating these exponents. This table right here shows all the different rules, and so please pause it here if you'd like to look at these more in depthly, but we're going to go over them each individually here next. First off, for the properties of exponents, the first property we're going to talk about is the negative exponent rule. Notice if that we have a base b raised to a negative n exponent, all we need to do to get rid of that negative exponent is move it to the, its reciprocal place in the fraction. So like in this case, 5 to the negative 3 is going to be moved, 5 to the third power is going to be moved to the bottom of the fraction which if we simplify, it would be 1 over 125. Same thing here, since in 1 over 4 to the negative 2 power, the negative exponent is on the bottom, so we're going to move it to the top. In this case, reduce it and get rid of the negative sign and make it 4 squared, which if we simplify, is 16. The next property we're going to talk about is the zero exponent rule, or in this case, any base raised to the zero power will always equal 1. So for example, in the first one here, we have 135 x squared y cubed, which is the entire base all being raised to the first power, or sorry, to the zero power. So in this case, then, that entire thing is going to simplify to 1. If you look at the second example, we have negative 25 x to the fifth y to the zero power. Since y is the only base being raised to the zero power, that is the only part that's going to reduce to 1. And so if we take 1 times the rest of it, it's just going to be the same. So in this case, it's going to simplify to negative 25x to the fifth. In our third example, notice that the negative 5, which is the base, is all in parentheses. So that entire base is being raised to the zero power. Thus, the entire thing will equal 1. Compare that to the last example here, where it's the negative 5 to the zero power, where it's the 5 being raised to the zero power first. Think order of operations where exponents have to come first. And so we're going to evaluate that, making that 1 times a negative, which would be multiplication following the order of operations, making it a negative 1. The next rule here we're going to talk about is the product rule, or when we're multiplying two like bases, and what we're going to do here is we're going to add the exponents. So for example, if we have a squared times a cubed, well a squared is two a's, a cubed is three more a's, and so if we add all those a's together, we get a to the fifth. Our next property is the power rule. And the power rule says that if we are taking a base that's already raised to a power raised to another power, then what we're going to do is multiply those exponents together. So for example here, 2 squared and then the entire, that entire thing cubed would be the same thing as saying 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared. Or which if we use our product rule there, it means that we have to add all those 2's together, making it 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6 or, which is the exact same thing we would get if we multiplied 2 times 3, giving us 2 to the 6th power. Our next property here is the quotient rule. With multiplication, we added the exponents. In this case, then, when we're dividing, we're going to subtract the exponents. For example, if we take a to the 5th divided by a squared, well, in our numerator, we have 5 a's. In our denominator, we have 2 a's. If we cross out the top and the bottom here, we're left with three a's. Or in this case, the same thing as taking five minus two, making that a to the third power. When we're talking about raising a product as, the, as our base, or in this case, a times b all raised to the n power, what we're going to do is distribute that exponent to everything in the base. So in this case, if we took two x all squared, we, that means we need to square both the 2 and the x. And if we simplify that, that will give us 4x squared. Same thing if we're working with a quotient or dividing bases. In this case, we're still going to distribute that exponent to both the numerator and the denominator. So like in this case, if we had 3 over y all cubed, then this would become 3 cubed over y cubed, in which we simplify would be 27y cubed. One thing to note here about the properties of exponents is that as long as you're using the rules or properties correctly, 
there doesn't really matter the order that we use. In this case, most of the time what we find to work out though is using and getting rid of negative exponents first, because a simplified answer should always have no negative exponents and should only have one of each type of base. Let's look at the first example here. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use our power rule here to distribute that, in this case, the power of a product, in this case, and distribute that fourth power to the two, the x, and the y. In this case here, we notice that we need to multiply the exponents of, and the x and the y because they already had exponents. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and do two to the fourth power, which gives us 16. And then we have the x cubed, we're all being raised to the fourth power, so three times four is 12. Same thing with the y, which we're gonna use that power rule again, six times four, making it 24. This gives us our finalized answer of 16 x to the 12th, y to the 24th. Notice there's no negative exponents and there's only one of each base. In our next example, we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna distribute that negative two power to the entire numerator and denominator. In this case, then that will give us five to the negative two, x to the negative two, and then y to the negative eight, because we have to multiply the four times the negative two. To get rid of those negative exponents, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and flip the fraction. Since everything has a negative exponent, we're going ahead and move the y to the eighth on top, and then the five to the negative two and x to the negative two on bottom. This eliminates the negative exponents. Thus, the last thing we need to do here is go ahead and then simplify that five squared, giving us 25. So our final answer here will be y to the eighth over 25 x squared. For examples. On this first one here, we notice that we have a negative y to, the ne or y to the negative fourth in the denominator. This means that the very first thing we should do is go ahead and move it to the top to make it a positive exponent. From here then, we notice that we have the 100 on top and the 20 on the bottom. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and simplify the y's on top. So notice we have a y squared and a y to the fourth. Using the product rule, we can go ahead and add those exponents together, giving us y to the six. So now we have 100 x to the 12th, y to the 6th over 20 x to the 16th. Going back to that 100 over 20, we can go ahead and cross those out, giving us, in this case, 20 divided by, or 20 into 100 five times. The same thing here with the x's, since we have 12 x's on top, and going ahead, crossing those out, we can go ahead and cross 12 out from the bottom, leaving us with that 16 minus 12, or in this case, x to the 4th in the denominator. So that leaves us with our final answer of 5y to the 6 over x to the 4th. In our next example, we are going to be doing some multiplication. In this case, we can go ahead and multiply each term by, uh, and compare, look at each term individually. So if we take negative 5 times negative 6 first, we're going to get that positive 30. If we look at our x's, we notice in the first one we have x to the 4th, and then the second one we have x to the 7th, so we're going to add those exponents together to give us x to the 11th. Finally, with the y's, this in the first one we have y to the first, even though it's not given there, it is still one y. And then in the second we have a let or y to the 11th, so 11 more y's. And so using the product rule, we're going to add those together to give us y to the 12th. On this next one here, we need to go ahead and distribute that negative three on to both those bases on top, and then go ahead and multiply that positive three to those on the bottom. So on top, we're gonna to get x to the positive six, y to the negative third, and on the bottom, we're gonna get x to the six and y to the negative third. Now, we wanna take care of those negative exponents by switching those from the top to the bottom. Is it really, but you might notice here that nothing has really changed. So in this case, we have x to the six and y to the third on top, but also an x to the six and y to the third on the, in the denominator. Thus, if we go ahead and cross both the x to the sixes out and the y to the thirds out, that leaves us with a one on top and a one on bottom, which if we simplify and divide, gives us an answer of one. So even if you think we've crossed everything out, there's still a one in the place there. If you look at our final example here, very first thing we wanna do is distribute that negative five using the product rule. I'm gonna go ahead and move this up to the top so we have a little bit more room. 
So if we do that, we're just going to bring over the 2, x to the negative third, y, which is still the first power, and z to the negative 6. And then if we go ahead and distribute that negative 5, we're going to get 2 to the negative fifth power and x to the negative fifth power. So from here then, it's kind of like what we did in number 4, where we're going to have to combine term for term. So we have 2 to the first and 2 to the negative fifth, which gives us 2 to the negative fourth power. With our x's, if we combine the negative 3 and the negative 5, we get x to the negative eighth. Then we're just going to bring down the y and z to the negative 6. Again, though, our final answer has to ha contain no negative exponents. So we're going to move those negative exponents to the denominator, leaving the y on top, the 2 to the 4th on the bottom, the x to the 8th on the bottom, and also the z to the negative 6. So the very last thing we need to do here, then, is just simplify the 2 to the 4th, which, if we do that, gives us 16. So our final answer here will be y over 16x to the 8th, z to the 6. The last part that we're going to talk about today in when we're talking about ex exponents and their rules is scientific notation. Scientific notation is just another way of writing a number, especially large or smaller numbers, in a different form. In this case, though, the scientific notation is always composed of a base that has to be greater than 0 but less than 10, and then times 10 to some power. So let's just look at the first example here. Notice our decimal place is in, is behind that last zero. So we're going to move it over until we get to a number that is between zero and less than 10. In this case, the 5.21. This right here is our base. And then we're going to write that as times 10 to the number of times we moved over the decimal point. In this case, 9. Notice it is going to be a positive exponent since it is a large number. So this is just this 5.21 times 10 to the 9th is just another way of rewriting that 5,210,000,000. Say we have a smaller number though. In this case, notice the decimal point is in front of, is behind that first zero. So in this case, we're going to be moving it to the right. Still needing to find a base that is greater than zero, but in this case, less than 10. In this case, the 6893 but we still have to bring over that negative sign. So we have a base of negative 6.893 times 10, and since we moved it over eight decimal places to the right, our exponent here is gonna be a negative eight. So in this case, negative exponents are going to refer to a smaller number. And then a positive exponent will be a large number. Please feel free to rewind this video at any time and to review your rules of exponents.